<laughs> but, and conversely. Uh, now, humans left East, our ancestors, began to leave East Africa maybe 50, 60,000 years ago. So what that tells us is in, th in that period, there has been no evolution of the language capacity. It's exactly what it was then, and maybe some time before. Now, the second fact, which is a plausible speculation rather than firmly established, is that if you go back shortly before that, there's no evidence for language at all. The evidence in this case is archaeological, and uh, what it shows is that there's a kind of a sudden burst of creative activity in one line of the many hominin species that were around, our ancestors, and uh, you see it in the construction of complex tools and uh, uh, evidence for the existence of complex social organizations, uh, symbolic, uh, symbolic representation, even pretty fantastic symbolic art, uh, uh, measurement of celestial events, maybe by you know, phases of the moon and so on. All of this happens in a very short time from an evolutionary point of view, and maybe roughly, um, say, 75,000 years ago, plus or minus. Uh, now that's, what that tells you is that whatever this capacity is that distinguishes humans from other organisms must have developed very quickly and therefore must have been very simple. In fact, what it suggests is that what's in the mind uh, was, is basically something like, kind of like a snowflake. It takes a complex form, but just by virtue of the laws of nature, uh, not because of some evolutionary process. That's just the way it has to be because of the way nature works. Now, a language is a computational system, a very unusual feature of human language, very unusual uh, within the whole biological world, is it has a property called discrete infinity. So there's a six-word sentence, there's a seven-word sentence, but there's no six-and-a-half-word sentence and it goes on indefinitely. That's different from almost anything in the biological world. Now, such systems are understood uh, by mid-20th century, thanks to the work of uh, Turing, Gödel, others. The general theory of computation involving such systems was quite well understood, and that suggests to us that that's exactly what emerged sometime, say roughly 75,000 years ago, uh, and all of the diversity and complexity of language must somehow either derive directly from that or be peripheral to language, like the way in which it's articulated by the mouth. The sensory motor system has been around for hundreds of thousands of years, and our effort to take this internal snowflake and get it out of your mouth is a complicated process, and it's pretty well understood by now that that's where the, that, that external process, really peripheral to language, is where the complexity and diversity of language resides. Also, it's mutability, that changes quite easily. When you learn a language, that's what you learn. You don't learn the internal principles that determine uh, the meaning and structure of expressions. Uh, the, one of the reasons you, can't, you don't learn that is there's no data for it. The child is not presented with any evidence for that. Uh, what you are presented with evidence for is things like pronunciation, uh, word order, uh, you know, the, what are, you know, morphological paradigms, do you, do, you, do, you, do, you use, do you express plural or don't you express it, things like that. That's what you have to learn, but it's all external to language. The internal part, what probably evolved, uh, say, in that brief window, is, must, must be something extremely simple and invariant. Same for all languages.